I'm Jenny Pronto. I work at Cornell um, in the Pro Dairy program. And this was a project that we have done over the last two years and um, is kind of wrapping up, but as I was talking about with somebody, never really is going to end. Um, oh, thanks. Um, as, as many projects do, um, we've already had requests for um, some curriculum uh, delivery later in the year, so it's likely to just keep going and, and going, which is a very good thing. The Digester Workforce Development Project is the title. Um, it was funded by the New York State Energy Research and Development Authority, <clears throat> which is our, our state agency that's put um, a lot of dollars into digesters over the last few decades. Uh, the basic goal of the project was developing and delivering high quality educational programs targeted to a range of workforces um, in the clean energy field in um, New York State. So I'll just go through a couple of different components of the project so you can get a good overview of the whole project. We're only going to focus on one um, part, which is the curriculums um, today, but just so you can um, be aware of the whole project. One part of the project was to set up, um, this is an example of a lab setup. Um, it's, we called it a diagnostic lab. So this went on farms that have a digester and they um, might be co-digesting one or two or three different substrates. And basically the aim of this is to diagnose any problems before they um, produce an upset in the digester system. Um, so they would be run and operated on a weekly or bi-weekly basis by the farmer himself. Um, so we have, I think, four of these set up. Um, it's gone okay, but the usage is not where we would like to see it, which um, is expected because there's no really any incentive to uh, maximize your efficiency. Um, so that was somewhat expected, somewhat disappointing, um, but there we have it. It's available and we'd like to see it used in the future more. Um, the virtual discussion group, if you stick around, Kathy Barrett's going to be talking about that at 840, so I won't say anything else about that, but it's been a really great thing and hopefully you can stay and listen to Kathy. A resource library development was part of the program. <clears throat> this is a, um, a screen view of our website. So basically, um, we've added a lot of information, a lot of fact sheets, um, a lot of things that already existed, we just kind of aggregated in one place. Um, and that's how we decided to deliver our resource library. We really didn't think this day and age that anybody would come visit, you know, our cubicles at Cornell on the fourth floor of Riley Robb Hall. So <laughs> web was a better delivery mechanism for that. <clears throat> this is really where we're going to focus today is on the educational curriculums. Um, so basically we developed six um, technical minded short courses and I'll, um, I'm going to go through e each of those courses in a minute. The last thing was a public relations short course, and I'm also going to go through our, um, our basic setup for one of those courses. Um, the idea behind this course was um, if we're going to be out there talking with the public about um, basic digester um, activities, then we thought that it would be a good idea to involve the media and hopefully educate the media to try and get any PR that's out there about digesters factual, because we've read so many things that have bad estimations or incorrect estimations, and we just thought some, some media education would be a good, a good endeavor. <clears throat> so that was basically the, the premise for that. Um, so kind of to back up just a little bit, the, the idea behind doing this entire project and the curriculums um, specifically was that we've heard many times from digester operators that there's a lack of a skilled workforce. And I think that's not specific to New York. I think that's probably state, countrywide for the states. Um, so the basic goal of the course was to remove this barrier to growth. It's not the only barrier to growth, but it's one of the barriers. And it's kind of something that we grappled with. If there's no market for this, like if we're going to train these people and there's not really jobs available, should we train them? But if anybody can remember back to the solar industry, this is the same thing that they went through with the solar industry. But they went ahead and got certified courses, um, training programs, trained the trainer programs, and now there's a very regimented, um, structured industry in solar certification and um, training. So that was kind of our, our idea behind this. So I'll just start going. I'm going to go through each of the six courses so that you can get an idea of what each of the courses looks like um, and the content for each course. So I'm going to start off with the most basic and move to the most, um, most advanced, most technical. So this is our most basic course, and this is the one that I was mentioning we do for the public, re pu public relations course. 
Um, so this is kind of just part of the advertisement flyer. Is this the right workshop for you? Do you want to know more about on-farm AD? Yes. Um, do you get contacted by producers in interested in AD? Yes. Do you find yourself in the, be in the position of being interviewed um, but not knowing what to say? Yes. Then you should come to this, um, this tour. So for this specific one, we do half a day farm tour and half a day workshop. We try to keep things short, concise, not lengthy, not wasting people's time, especially for the media. And this is something that really makes sense. As somebody said, you know, these people who cover media events, they need to know everything about like dog parks to um, nail salons to digesters to, I mean, everything. And they don't really care about being educated specifically on one thing. Um, so somebody told us that and then we kind of backed off, but you know, we really found that a lot of the media people really do want to know. They want to be correct and we had a, a really great response to people coming out to this. <coughs> um, so yeah, just some basically some other um, information about the course. Um, this is the course overview. So for each of these courses we did have a, a bound booklet curriculum um, that people could walk away with. <clears throat> so we gave them this hard copy booklet and this is what we went through in the workshop too. We followed through the same so like I said, this is the most basic course we have. Um, it was just a brief overview of AD, um, what the status in New York is, benefits, um, different feedstocks, and then different components of the system, the digester, the engine, um, the heat portion, the um, effluent and materials handling portion, uh, renewable energy generation from a really basic standpoint, basic economics, um, some challenges, further resources, uh, related information, and then for the media people and also for extension folks, because we had a lot of extension people taking this, um, some information about educating others, some common terminology, which is really important. I don't know if anybody was in the, the session yesterday, in the digester session, they called it dye gas. We had a little bit of a, a debate going on whether it's dye gas or biogas or ter terminology, but that's <laughs> just one example. Um, complete mixed versus mixed. You know, the terminology is really important. So we have some... Um, some glossaries and, and terminology help there. And then um, reliable estimates, which we found people really like too. A really easy way that somebody can say, well, you know, I want to write this story about this farm that has so many cows and they want to do this plug and chug kind of thing that we provided uh, really easy calculations. I just gave an example and of agenda for this course, just for this, I don't have this for all the courses, just for this one. Um, so like I said, in the morning we have a farm tour we get the people out first. We don't stick them in a classroom first. We get them out there, they let, we let them see everything, um, talk to the farmer, ask their questions. We have the farmer come to a lunch um, and give his perspective um, kind of in a sit down format. They can ask some more questions. And then we go through the, the workshop and the PowerPoint <coughs> presentation and through the, the hard book curriculum. Um, and then it's questions and we're done by two in the afternoon. So it's a really, like I said, get them in, get them out, get them some information. It's really basic. It's not meant to be technical or advanced. Um, and that's why we have six of these, so that it can be short. Uh, the next level of, um, the, the next level up, of course, is the technical feasibility. Um, so again, I just, you know, part of the advertisement flyer for this. Um, basically, understand, evaluate, explore, and understand um, different components of determining the feasibility of putting a digester on. So who would come to this? It'd be a farm that's interested in having a digester, um, farm advisors, any ag consultants that speak with farms that are interested in digesters, just to be aware of what it's going to take to go through that process. So again, the course overview, this is also the, in the hard book and also in the presentation format. Um, introduction, anaerobic digester in New York, the basics of digestion, but the basics here are a little bit more advanced. We get into some microbiology, chemistry, and physics of the process and of the system. Um, we talk about a little bit of thermodynamics in terms of needs. Um, so this one is determining the feasibility. So everything comes at, from the standpoint of what are you going to need to know to design your system? <coughs> we don't teach them how to design it, just what are you going to need to know so that when that salesperson comes to talk to you, you can say, I don't think that sounds right. <coughs> Um, how to find funding, that's an important one. Uh, laws, regulations, agreements, permits, codes, uh, that's another important one to look at upfront before you're going to put a digester system in. Be aware of what you're going to have to go through, 
what the permitting process is going to be. Feasibility parameters. We really think everybody should have a feasibility study done before they put a system on. Um, what is that going to entail? How much does it cost? What information do you need? Um, and then also for a feasibility study, the who, what, when, why, and how of those. Um, because again, the farm should really be involved in that feasibility study, and sometimes they aren't. Uh, so we want the farm and people advising the farm to be best prepared to go through that process. And the last thing was a, a sensitivity analysis on key assumptions. So it's really easy if you're going to do a feasibility study to say, well, you'll get uh, four cents for that waste stream and uh, two cents for electricity and bang, you have a profitable project or something, you know, just as an example. But how sensitive are those estimates? How can they change? What's going to affect them? You should be aware of those things if you're going to you know, plop down a couple million dollars on a, on a project. So this is the third level course, um, and this is uh, strictly an economics course. So thank goodness I did not have to teach this one. <laughs> we have, if anybody knows um, Brent Bloy, he's great. He used to work at Cornell, now he's at um, Purdue. <coughs> he's an ag economist. Um, and he put together the curriculum and also delivered this course, which was really great, and I'm gonna get into something um, a little bit later on in terms of expertise, because this is something we grappled with. Um, how are we, I mean, I'm not an economist. I don't feel like I can stand up and teach people about econ economics. So we were really lucky to have someone that could stand up there as an actual expert and give that information. <coughs> so this is a one day course. Um, again, nine to two, nine to three ish. Um, quantify, predict, conduct, utilize, just some keywords in the advertising of the, of the course. Okay, so that curriculum, introduction, introduction to economics, and I, I broke it out a little bit more here so that we can look at the key components of an economic analysis. What do they look at to, deter, to, to determine the economic viability of a project? Um, capital investments, <coughs> operating revenues, cost savings, operating costs, um, and then a summary of the whole economic analysis. He gave a really int brief introduction, which is good for me, because I did not know any. It was like Economics 101. <laughs> um, and people, people were, were happy to learn these things. The time value of money, um, the role of discount rate, economic profitability. And then he also has a model that he's developed for um, specifically for digester economic evaluation. Um, so he went through that model, how to use it, and then we did a case study. So we had um, a couple times, we had a farm there, and we used their farm information, and we did a whole economic analysis for them right on the spot. It was, it's a really good course, and um, people, people responded well to it. People liked it. Okay, let's see, what's this, the fourth one? <laughs> okay, so this is the second to the last. So this is the second most, no, I'm sorry, the third most, um, is this the fourth? Fourth, thanks. <laughs> Should have numbered them. So practical considerations and implementation of a digester. Okay, so this is kind of the middle of the road one. So you've done your feasibility study, you have an estimate, what do you do now? You need to take a little bit deeper look into a couple different components of your farm. Determine your needs for different areas, for materials handling, energy needs, um, a little bit more advanced look than you would have for the feasibility study. This is kind of where you're gonna start designing. Like I said, we, did, we are so steering away from designing a system or teaching someone how to design it, but again, they should be aware because they're gonna to talk to designers. So they should be educated about what they're gonna discuss with the different digester um, salespeople. <clears throat> so this is an intermediate level course. Sorry, I'll just go back. So audiences, um, ag consultants, engineers, contractors, service providers, and I, th I think producers, we had producers come to this as well. Um, so just looking at what this course entails, um, practical considerations, that's like um, farm layout, um, weather conditions in your area, um, all the farm needs that come into play. Um, a lot of things that might have been covered in your feasibility study, but now looking at them from the design perspective. So design considerations and what the producers should know about that. Safety is something that we should start to look at at this point. And that's not always taken into account. You're, there's, there's very few things that are almost nothing that's regulated in terms of safety for farms or digesters. 
Um, so it's at this point, when you're designing the system, that you want to say, I want to have a pulley to pull that pump out. You know, you don't want to get done with the project and then say, darn, I can't take that pump out, you know, I'll fix it. <laughs> so you want to design that into the system. Design out the confined spaces. That's the biggest thing that we teach. Don't put a pit that you're going to have to go down into. Just eliminate that from the design, because then you don't even have to deal with that as a safety issue. <clears throat> so we talked a little bit about the construction and, contract <clears throat> construction and contracting management, um, which is something that I learned a lot about. Kirk covers that, because he's had a lot of experience with that. Um, and they basically go through um, how to do a bid, um, how the construction process works, um, things to avoid, things to expect, relationships, how to keep you know, your budget on schedule. Um, some really good things to look at again at this stage. Um, considerations of the process performance. Uh, if an input changes, if you're not going to get a substrate that you thought you were going to have, how does that change? Um, if your energy needs change, how does that impact the design of the system? Um, value added ventures, we looked at um, things like co-digestion, um, uh, synergistic enterprises for heat and electricity and some more advanced things after, after the digester that are, that are sort of optional but value added um, enterprises. And then additional resources, terminology, glossary, um, things like that. Okay, so we also call this intermediate. Um, it's kind of more advanced. <coughs> this is something I'm not sure how um, it's going in other states, but this is one that's in huge demand in our state, biogas cleanup and utilization. Um, so not so much the utilization, that's kind of covered in the other courses. Um, so we would cover energy generation um, in different ways here, but the biogas cleanup is really why people come to this one. That's really what's um, in demand. So extension professionals, again, because a lot of, a lot of extension folks get, get questions from the digester operators about what should I do, you know, I have this gas, the engine's not running well, what do I do? Um, service contractors, equipment suppliers, safety professionals, um, some wastewater facility operators, we haven't had any, but they could find this helpful, and dairy cooperative representatives. And producers, again, always, we have producers come to all of these. Sorry, this is a picture of a, a biogas scrubber, by the way. <coughs> um, so this course covers um, biogas basics, composition, um, kind of how it's formed, the, the more like chemical process of how the biogas is actually formed. Like I said, biogas utilization, some energy generation, engine um, information, and then um, a good portion of it is uh, biogas cleanup technologies. So in terms of what technologies we cover, we cover moisture removal, um, hydrogen sulfide removal, by physical or chemical means, and then also by microbial fixation. Um, another one, hydrogen sulfide removal from ad additives to the digester. So instead of having a process after adding something to the digester. CO2 removal, and then we try to um, provide equipment options and vendors. <coughs> it's a really quickly changing field, um, so that's going to be a difficult thing to keep updated um, and, and available for people but we took a first stab at it. Um, <clears throat> so this is number six, I know that. <laughs> this is the last one, the most advanced one. We have the curriculum prepared for this and we actually have not taught one of these courses. So this would be a two-day course. All of the other ones, with the exception of one, were, were one-day courses. Um, this would be a two-day course. Um, I'll just read. So in terms of advertising, are you hoping to prepare yourself or someone else to operate a digester? Yes. Are you interested in using a lab to monitor the impacts of co-digestion? Yes. Um, do you need assistance with troublesho troubleshooting? Yes. Then you should come to this. Um, so uh, covers design considerations from biological and chemical, daily operation, preventative and corrective maintenance um, to different components, record keeping, and again, safety. Um, so this one is going to be for the person who's on the ground operating the digester or someone who's in close relationship to the, the operation maintenance um, or daily um, operations of the, the digester or any of the components of the digester. <coughs> so just really, these are just the, the major headings. There's like tons of subheadings. I just didn't want to make it really complex, but 
Um, in this one, introduction, standard performance indices. How can you see day to day, week to week, that your system is performing as it should? What should you be tracking and monitoring? And how do you monitor that? Um, safety, we tried to put right up there again. We covered a lot of the same things as, um, as we did in a few courses back. Um, but now it's from the point of, all right, you designed and put on whatever you did. It's there. Now how do you deal with things that weren't designed properly? <clears throat> Monitoring different parameters. Um, operation startup, that's a big one um, because there's a lot of intricate um, details to consider when you're starting up a system. A lot of times the designers will come out and handle that, but um, again, the producer or the person who's operating it should be very intricately involved in that, in that process. Um, troubleshooting digester symptoms. Once things start to go wrong, how do you even know they're going wrong and what do you do about them when they do go wrong? <clears throat> Uh, maintenance, a lot of the engine, a lot of the maintenance is um, on the engine side of things for this uh, curriculum. Advanced management of the digester. Um, so that's where we covered the, the farm labs. That's where that came into play that I showed the picture of that farm lab set up at the beginning. Um, how do you manage the digester processes, um, like I said, to, to avoid um, upsets in the system? Chemical and biological processes. We think that the person managing this should have some idea of what's going on in there. It's kind of like a black box in the system. Sometimes people don't really know what's happening inside, but they should. And the last one is um, some more PR and media outreach. So in a lot of cases, people get these things on their farm and people ask a lot of questions. People in the community, what is that thing? What's that eight foot flare over there that I see when I drive by at night? The fire department gets called all the time. Um, Talk to people in your community, tell them the benefits, tell them why this is a good thing, so that they don't have this question, oh, that farm over there is doing something again. They have that big construction project. Now there's a flare every night. <laughs> um, we basically have a, um, a public relations kind of, some fact sheets that people can hand out. Um, we try to equip them so if the media comes, almost all the new farms now, in, at least in New York, have the media coming out and um, do a story on, on the digester. So we want that producer or that digester operator to be able to really convey the benefits of that system. Okay, so that's just a listing. If anybody wanted to jot any down or see the, the listing of titles again. So some considerations really quickly to go through. The length of the course and the timing. I said this a, a few times. We don't want to waste people's time. We, wanna, we broke it into six courses to get really specific information so that you can say what it is that what part of the system you're interested in learning and you come to that one day a few hours you got your information and you're out of there you have your book and you you take it home um, and timing in terms of seasonality for the for the farm schedule expertise this is one of the biggest considerations i have never owned a digester i probably never will own a digester i found it really challenging to stand up there and teach people how to run a digester so we've really tried to bring in as much expertise from other people as we can. We always have the farm. We always hold this at a farm with a digester. We have anyone who's interested or involved in um, operating the digester come and speak, tell their perspectives, tell their experience, because like I said, I, I can't convey that. I can tell you about the technical parts, but I can't tell you what's going to happen when you get up at 2 in the morning to fix the engine, because <clears throat> I don't know. <laughs> so that, that's been a challenge. Um, I kind of touched on this, which comes first, the market or the knowledge. We decided to go ahead. We have these courses. There's other places, Charles um, from Michigan State, that has um, courses. Um, I think that if we remove this as a barrier to growth, that we can just have it available as the market changes and starts growing. It's going to be there. It's going to be used. Um, and people can no longer say, but we don't have anybody trained to work on this. Here's the courses. Come and we'll teach them, we'll train them. It's taken care of. Uh, certification demands and values. I don't think the demand is there right now to have a certification process. I think it will be there in the future to have some standard for these courses um, and the information that's taught. Something to keep in the back of our mind. And what does it mean that our most popular course was the most basic course? I think that says a little bit about the market right now. Like I said, we didn't even teach the advanced course yet. We, we tried twice to schedule it, and nobody signed up for it. I, we, we found that interesting, but the, the most basic course, we taught it six times. We had an outstanding attendance. Um, so 
it's just interesting to look at what that says about the market and, and the needs for having an, an expert person dedicated to running the digester. So that's, um, that's all I have. <laughs>